everyone i am dr deepa today we are here to learn about the topic the superior orbital fissure and the inferior orbital fissure the superior as well as the inferior orbital fissure are the bony fissures which are present along the orbital cavity we will study about the location of the orbital fissures the communication of the orbital fissure the boundaries and the important contents passing through the fissure in this video for today to begin with the superior orbital fissure as we can see over here in this view the orbital cavity as seen here the right orbital cavity is been seen where we can appreciate the fissure so here comes the superior orbital fissure and this is the inferior orbital fissure which occupies the posterior most part of the orbital cavity this superior orbital fissure is located between the posterior part of the lateral wall of the orbit and the roof of the orbit so the location of the superior orbital fissure is between the posterior part of the lateral wall of the orbit and the roof of the orbit this superior orbital fissure is bounded laterally and below by the greater wing of the sphenoidal bone as seen here it is bounded above by the lesser wing of the sphenoid and medially it is limited by the body of the sphenoid deep in the deeper part so this is about the boundaries so it this is the bony fissure which is present between the lesser wing of the sphenoid above and the greater wing of the sphenoid below and medially limited by the body of the sphenoid so this is about the superior orbital fissure so along the lesser wing of the sphenoid the superior orbital fissure along the lesser wing of the sphenoid represents a small tubercle to, along its medial side the lesser wing of the sphenoid towards its medial end represents a small tubercle to which is the attachment of the common tendinous ring so there is so in this is the diagrammatic view showing the superior orbital fissure this superior orbital fissure is broad along its medial part and narrow along its superolateral part the there is a attachment of the common tendinous ring which divides the superior orbital fissure into three compartments that is this is the superolateral compartment here comes the middle compartment or the intermediate compartment and this is the inferomedial compartment so we'll just move on to the structures passing through each compartment of the superior fissure along the superolateral compartment there is the passage of the vein that is the superior ophthalmic vein so the superior there is one vein passing along the superolateral compartment that is the superior ophthalmic vein then comes the cranial nerve the fourth cranial nerve that is the trochlear nerve the branches of the ophthalmic division which is the division coming from the fifth cranial nerve the lacrimal and the frontal and also the arteries that is the lacrimal artery and the recurrent meningeal branch of the lacrimal artery so all these make up the contents of the superolateral part the inferomedial part allows the passage of only one vein that is the inferior ophthalmic vein and the intermediate compartment the intermediate compartment of this superior orbital fissure allows the passage of allows the passage of the two divisions of the oculomotor nerve that is the superior division and the inferior division it allows the passage of the superior and the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve here along with the two divisions of the oculomotor nerve it also contains the nasociliary nerve it also contains the nasociliary nerve and the abducens nerve and the abducens nerve so all these make up the contents of this intermediate compartment of the superior orbital fissure so we can just remember it as a smiley so the 
these two represent the superior and the inferior division of the superior and the inferior division of the third that is the oculomotor nerve there is a nasociliary nerve nasociliary nerve which also makes up the content of the superior uh, the intermediate compartment as well as the sixth cranial nerve that is the abducens nerve so they make up the content of the intermediate compartment of the superior orbital fissure so this is about the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure i repeat the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure along its superolateral compartment are the lacrimal and the frontal branches then comes the trochlear nerve along with the superior ophthalmic vein and the lacrimal artery with recurrent meningeal branch of the lacrimal artery as well as the inferior inferomedial compartment allows the passage of the inferior ophthalmic vein whereas the middle compartment allows the passage of these two divisions of the oculomotor the nasociliary and the abducens nerve so these are the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure moving on to the inferior orbital fissure the location of the inferior orbital fissure the location of the inferior orbital fissure as we can see over here is present at the junction of the posterior part of the lateral wall the posterior part of the lateral wall and the floor of the orbit as we can see carefully observe carefully over here the posterior part of the lateral wall and the floor of the orbit lies the inferior orbital fissure so this inferior orbital fissure is limited above by the greater wing of the sphenoid whereas below it is limited by the maxilla so it is bounded above by the greater wing of the sphenoid and below it is bounded by the maxilla this inferior orbital fissure tends to communicate with the pterygopalatine fossa as well as the infra temporal fossa so it is seen to communicate with two fossas that is the infra temporal and the pterygopalatine fossa whereas the superior orbital fissure communicates with the middle cranial fossa deep to it so the superior orbital fissure is in communication with the middle cranial fossa whereas the inferior orbital fissure tend to communicate with the infra temporal as well as the pterygopalatine fossa this infra inferior orbital fissure allows the passage of the structures three important structure so it allows the passage of the three important structures which include the infra orbital vessels and nerves which include the infra orbital infra orbital vessels and nerves number 1 number second is the zygomatic nerve zygomatic nerve and number third is the branches that is the orbital branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion so the orbital nerves of the pterygopalatine ganglion the branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion so these are the structures passing through the inferior orbital fissure i repeat the inferior orbital fissure allows the passage of the infra orbital vessels and nerves the zygomatic nerves and the orbital branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion here so we can just remember it as z i p z stands for the zygomatic nerve i stands for the infra orbital vessels and nerves p stands for the branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion so this is about the contents of the infra orbital fissure so this is all about the formation the communication the boundaries and the contents passing through the superior and the inferior orbital fissure so this is again the atlas view of this skull showing the, the fissure that is the superior orbital fissure seen from the superior view as we can see over here the superior orbital fissure as i have already told you which is bounded 
above by the lesser wing of the sphenoid and below by the greater wing of the sphenoid and medially are told the superior orbital fissure is limited by the body of the sphenoid as seen here so this is the formation of the superior orbital fissure along with its contents this is again the view showing the contents of the superior orbital fissure as i have told the superolateral compartment allowing the passage of the lacrimal nerve the frontal nerve the trochlear nerve and the superior ophthalmic vein which is seen along the superolateral compartment the abducens nerve making up the content the abducens nerve the nasociliary nerve and the divisions of the oculomotor nerve making up the content of the intermediate part of the superior orbital fissure is seen over here so this is all about the two fissures that is the superior and the inferior orbital fissure thank you